Whisk recently held the long-anticipated big reveal for its four-passenger Evatol aircraft. The sixth-generation model builds on work that Whisk has been doing largely in secret with its two-seat Cora technology demonstrator. But what really sets the California company apart is its absolute insistence on operating the aircraft fully autonomously without a pilot on board. So what we introduced is called Generation 6. This aircraft is actually our fifth generation aircraft. This is two seat. The new aircraft is four. It is self-flying and it's all electric. So there's no pilot, there's no pilot controls. All the pilots are on the ground, the supervisors are on the ground. It's a fully autonomous aircraft that is able to execute its flight route and carry four passengers from point A to point B. Now Whisk insists that autonomous flight is absolutely the safest approach and also the most economical. Yeah, we're going straight to self-flying and, and the reason for that is, is multi. First, it's safer. And so aviation is inherently safe, but when there is an incident, it's usually a human factor. It's over 80% of the time when there's an accident. There's a loop, a, a series of human uh, steps that were taken that you know, caused an accident and such. It will be safer. It will also allow us to scale. So a big target for us is $3 per passenger mile. To do that, you extract cost out, all electric, simpler, less moving parts, no pilot, no pilot controls. It's just passengers that are seated in your aircraft. So think of it like anybody that can afford an Uber X, not black, but X, can take our aircraft for transport. Whisk itself will be getting the new air taxi business model underway. So we'll start, I mean, this, this whole marketplace, the market is brand new, all the technology is new. Um, you know, we'll be educating customers, bringing them through the loop. And so what we want to do is, we are obviously building the aircraft, but we're going to operate it too for the first few years. Don't know how long, but certainly for the first few years we're going to operate. We are in discussions with multiple airlines. They all obviously like to be operators. And so, of course, we'll get to that point, but our, our model is the train and transition. And so to do that over a period of years, make sure we curate the experience. People are very comfortable with it. They feel safe and it's enjoyable. There's lots of general aviation airports that are underutilized. There are lots of helipads that are underutilized. So we're gonna leverage existing infrastructure on prescribed routes. And we'll look for the highest demand routes. So, uh, um, you know, again, it's not like thousands of vertiports across the city, then you just go to one that's near you in time, perhaps, but certainly not how this market starts. And like the Cora technology demonstrator, the new sixth generation aircraft will have completely electric propulsion. It, it is similar with uh, six booms and 12 lift fans. It's similar in that there's a front row and a back row, but what this aircraft has is a pusher prop in back. The generation six does not. So how do you get propulsion? We have the lift fans, we still have 12 lift fans, we still have six booms. 12 lift fans allow you to lift up vertically. The forward row will tilt, and that will be the propulsion mechanism. And so we changed the architecture slightly from this architecture. Uh, why? It's much more efficient and noise. It is super quiet, you know, when you, when you go this route and you have these tilting fans. Uh, we, we believe it's gonna be like ambient truck, you know, on a highway a mile away and some ambient noise. It's gonna be super quiet. Whisk says it's making good progress with the type certification work. We've been working with the FAA for years and we've already filed our G1 and we're well underway in our G2. So we're marching down the path and, and absolutely. So what, what we're doing is there are other people that are, have piloted versions of their aircraft. They're also working with the FAA, which is great and awesome and that, that will help pave the way for this whole marketplace, we're extending the FAA's reach into autonomous flight. Other countries are doing it, and if the U.S. doesn't keep pace, we're not going to be competitive. And so we're working with them to say, okay, what are all the things that we need to think of when we talk about autonomous flight? So we built a concept of operations with the Boeing company. We published that three weeks ago. Uh, we work with NASA as well on the whole autonomy aspect of this. So we're bringing that to the FAA and say, look, this is how we see the system operating. They've been incredibly supportive. Well, what's got observers really scratching their head is how WISC is going to convince air safety regulators to approve fully autonomous operations. It seems that it's going to take a gradual approach. The thing that most people would gravitate towards is say, oh, you must have an AI engine. You know, no, no, no. We're actually following FAA procedural 
software methodologies in terms of what we do with a threat that we detect. So of course there are sensors, there are sensors in the aircraft, there are sensors on the ground. There is software that determines you know, what, what that threat is, but we're following a procedural process, it's not AI, and it's, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but 93% of commercial aviation today is already automated. So the technology is not the part that, that is really the challenge. It, it's really more about stitching that whole system together, getting the FAA and EASA and others to certify that whole system, and then the education with the actual passengers, you know, to make them, educate them on how safe this is and a safer mode of transportation and affordable and all that.